Two weeks ago, South Africans were reminded of the fragility of their peace after the U.S. released a terror alert, throwing many into a frenzy. The South African government went on an offensive, slating the U.S. Embassy for failing to follow procedure. Amidst reports of increasing terrorism threats, tonight's episode of Unfiltered discusses how prevalent are terrorism-linked activities in South Africa. Now, let's speak to Aldrin Sampier, who's the host of the show. Aldrin, of course, a huge focus on terrorism looking at what happened two weeks ago how are you taking it forward well actually last week I was at the relaunch of the South African press National Press Club and the Minister of State Security Deputy Minister of State Security Zizigoto was there as well and one of the issues that he raised during um, his address to some of the journalists there was around this terror alert from the US and basically arguing that what the US is basically trying to do is to increase the list of targeted countries or primary countries that are considered to be more vulnerable um, to terrorism. But of course we have been told that South Africa is vulnerable and also that the ground is quite fertile for the creation of these terrorism cells. One of the people actually who had been accused of uh, building and creating these terrorism cells is uh, Farad Huma who is a terrorism accused and sanctioned by the US government as well. So he'll be joining us in an exclusive interview with him this evening at half past eight on SABC3 as we look into this question how did he make it onto the list but remember as well Bongiwe that he was also one of the accused that were listed in that virulent attack that took place and um, the later on the state then decided to drop the charges against him. Also joining us for this conversation is uh, Jasmine Opperman who is a counter-terrorism expert. She'll be joining us to tell us about some of the research that has been done and how these cells operate also considering the concern that has been raised about how some financial institutions or NGOs as well are being used to facilitate the funding of some of these terrorism attacks. And then we're also speaking to Euro, uh, human rights lawyer uh, Yusha Tayop, and he was actually one of the lawyers representing the Tulsi Twins. Remember earlier on this year, the Tulsi Twins went into a plea bargain with the state, so he'll be speaking to us about that as well. And of course, worrying developments there, Aldrin, I mean, one would think that since we saw uh, Samantha Luthwaite, the Black yep. Widow, uh, when we saw that terrorism attack in, in Kenya, and of course how she had her life base here in South Africa, we would have seen a bit more tightened security in this regard. But uh, looking forward to watching the show, uh, of course, it looks like it, it's really going to be quite an insightful show, unfiltered tonight at 8.30 p.m. on SABC3, Aldrin St. Pierre, of course, will be bringing you that.